Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillahi alhamd. Allahu Akbar kabira. Walhamdulillahi kathira. Wa subhanallahi bukratan wa asila. La ilaha illa Allah wahda. Sadaqa wa'ada. Wa nasara abda. Wa a'azza jundahu. Wa hazama al-ahsab wahda. La ilaha illa Allah. Wa la na'abudu illa iyaah. مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافر اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وعلى أصحاب سيدنا محمد وعلى أزواج سيدنا محمد وعلى ذرية سيدنا محمد وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا Abduhu wa Rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We begin our uh, day today. We begin our uh, celebration today. We begin our khutbah today with all praise and perfect praise due to Allah, the one whom we seek help and forgiveness from. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides, never be led astray. Whomsoever Allah leaves astray, no one can guide. We bear witness today that there is none worthy of worship, no God except Allah. We bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun that O ye who believe be mindful of Allah. Be mindful, be cognizant, be aware of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission. To Allah, with your hearts pointed to Allah. Allah tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhulubakum wa man yut'illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan. Iman. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be aware of Allah and say that which is right. Speak the truth. Allah will bless your deeds for you and forgive you of your sins. Whoever obeys Allah, and the Messenger of Allah has truly then achieved a great triumph. I pray that may Allah open my chest to make easy for me this task, loosen the knots of my tongue, that these words may be understood, and that glory be to Allah alone. Glory be to you alone, Allah, for we have no knowledge except that which you have given us. Verily, you are the one who is the all-knowing, all-wise. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, wa Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Wa lillah, ilhamd. Again, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Eid Mubarak to each and every one of you. In case you didn't realize it was Eid, welcome. It had news flash, it is Eid now. So it's a blessing to be here with you all in person. It's a blessing to be here with our brothers and sisters who are uh, joining us at a distance, wherever you might be, or whether you see this in the future, inshallah, uh, may our sincerest greetings of peace be upon you. So many of you are probably familiar with the character and the game of Super Mario. Most folks are, yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I think it's a multi-generational thing at this point. It was something I grew up with, something maybe many of y'all grew up with, and your kids and everybody else have seen it in so many different ways. And so for me, the main way I encountered Super Mario was on a Nintendo. It was a 2D side-scroller, very simple thing on a Super Nintendo. Uh, and it was a pretty simple game. All right? The Super Mario was a pretty simple, simple game. It's 
Mario's dropped into a uh, world, into a level, and to put it simply, he just needs to get from point A to point B and can do so in a variety of ways. You know, it's, uh, you can just run through the level, you can jump up and you get your gold coins, you can, you know, fight your enemies, whatever you want to do, but you're, you're going to have to get through, and at some point, at least in my game, there's a time limit. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably like, what is this guy doing talking about Super Mario on Eid? And what does it have to do with Eid, let alone with Ramadan? But as I mentioned before, uh, with respect to the game itself, when we think about it, when we, when we think about this aspect of life, that what does this have to do that when you're, when you're dropped into this level in Super Mario, you know, as I mentioned, you can, you can choose however you want to complete this level. You know, it's, 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 it's pretty, uh, it's, not, it's not scripted in any way. You can, you can kind of write your own path in terms of how you choose to navigate that path. It's a very simple level, but you can choose many different ways of how you operate through it. And as I mentioned, you know, you can take your time, you can go take things slowly uh, and take in the scenery for whatever it's worth. You can cash in all the different coins. You can, you know, hit any boxes to get all these uh, flower powers and whatnot. Um, you can take your frustrations out. You can do all these different things. That I would go so far as to say that the way the Super Mario side-scroller games are set up, and maybe other games as well, that it's not that different from life for us as human beings. It's not that different for us as humans when we are put into the world and we are living a life which is very, in, in, in very simple terms, very short, very simple life in different ways. Um, but what's very interesting is that as we are dropped into this world, as we go through the world, we too have different choices we can make. We too have difficult things that might come out and they might not look like Koopas or little turtles or Goombas or things that are like in Super Mario, but they are different adversities that we face. They are different things that we might face. Uh, there's loss. There's, as Allah tells us in the Quran, that we will surely test you with things of loss, with uh, you know, trials, with afflictions. And so there's these things that are guaranteed, but there's also different perks. There's also great things. You know, there's the gold coins. There's money. There's all that different stuff that is there in life. And so if we're not careful, though, if we go through this life just without any idea of how to get from point A to point B in a proper mindful way versus just, hey, YOLO, I'm just going to live my life how I'm going to live my life. Uh, we might miss out on much of what that journey was actually about. We might just have ran through the whole level, gone from point A to point B, but what did we even get from it? What did we, what did we do from it? We just, we just drove through life without any kind of a stop sign. And so it's here where I think it's interesting for us to think about that not only Islam, our religion of Islam, our faith of Islam, but especially the month we just came out of, the month of Ramadan, as we've come to experience it. And I, I want to make sure that I note it in the way that it's oftentimes said that, brothers and sisters, we've fasted this whole month of Ramadan, and now we're here in this moment. And that might not be true for a lot of people. A lot of people might not have been able to fast. A lot of people might not have been able to participate in this Ramadan as each and every one of us had the experience. Many of us, maybe most of us, were able to experience it in a singular way. But... It's not to say that every single person experienced it in the exact same way. And so now how I am experiencing it is the exact same as you. You might have had a very different experience. Um, and so it's very important for us to point that out, that as we have individually and also collectively come to experience this uh, month of Ramadan, and now we culminate it today on this celebration of Eid, on this day of Eid, it may give us an insight as to how we've been maybe living our life, our side-scrolling life, going from point A to point B but how we can maybe properly start to play this game of life, how we can start to properly navigate this game of life, this uh, station of life that we're at, wherever we might be, that we have a moment of a check-in, pause. Because as we know, it's, it's not, it doesn't uh, beho it behooves us as well to say that uh, we might have known some folks that had entered this Ramadan with us, but they may not be here with us at the end of Ramadan. And I've seen so many people across the world who may not have even had a chance to start this Ramadan, or people who had the chance to experience this Ramadan alongside us, but their way of experiencing it was completely different. And so thinking about the month of Ramadan and our purpose today on Eid, in a sense, as uh, Muslims, as Allah tells us in the Quran, not only is it one that helps us reconnect and remind for what our purpose is, that you haven't just been dropped into the side-scrolling game of life aimlessly, you haven't been just dropped here just to get from point A to point B. There's something more significant. 
there's something deeper for you to take out from this. But what in particular is about the uh, month of Ramadan? What in particular is about uh, the Eid uh, al-Fitr? What is the particular month, uh, the, the substance about what we are at right now? What, is, what does Allah have to say about it? And Allah does not mince words. God does not mince words when it says in the Quran, very short, four or five verses. That's it. He had to say what he had to say and he said it. That when we think about what the purpose of our fasting was, what the purpose of going through this fast, going through this month, getting to this point right now, being in this celebration space with all of us together, what are the point? What's the point of all this? For many of us, it's now just a time on the calendar um, that we just look up, right? It's just, it's, it, 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 it sometimes loses its meaning in a sense. We're like, oh, hey, Ramadan's coming up. Yeah, I know I'm going to maybe have to fast and do all these different things. And it's become very um, watered down in some ways. But when we think about what did Allah remind us, what did God remind us about this month in the Quran? Allah says in the Quran, uh, in chapter 2, verse 183 to 187, Allah tells us that, O ye who believe that fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those before you, so that you might become God conscious, so that you might become aware of Allah, that you might be a people of taqwa, a people recognizing God. That's the end goal. Allah starts us off with that, that says, hey, you're going to go through this marathon, you're going to go through this type uh, of test, you're going to go through this phase here, um, and this is what the objective is. Right in the next verse, Allah tells us that uh, and when we fast, when we're able to fast, this is the mechanics of fasting, that if you're able to fast, here's how you fast and whatnot, but closes the verse by saying that Fasting, if you're able to, and it's better for you, that if, you, if you're able to fast, to go ahead and fast, to do it, because it's better for you, if only you knew. That, that if only you knew, if only you had an idea, if only you used your ilm, if only you used your knowledge, you would know that this is something that is a benefit for you. Allah doesn't stop there, it continues. That what is the purpose of Ramadan? He told us the mechanics of fasting. What's the purpose of Ramadan? That Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was sent as a guidance for humanity. But whoever is then present in this month and is able to should then fast. That Allah does not intend hardship for you. Allah intends ease for you. And that when we complete that fasting, when you complete the prescribed period of Ramadan, what do you do at the end? that you proclaim the greatness of Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. You fill this day, you fill the end of this period with a celebration, with a proclamation that there is no God but Allah and proclaiming the greatness of Allah. But what is the purpose in that sense? The purpose, as Allah tells us, is that perhaps you will be grateful. That perhaps you might have a sense of gratitude. That as you're going through this month, Allah has always already told us what's the purpose of the fasting to gain a sense of God consciousness. All right. But what is uh, the, the what is, why, why fasting? If you only knew. Use your intellect. You don't have to go onto modern science and see why fasting is beneficial for you. You don't have to go into all these different spaces to see what is the benefit of fasting. But thinking about in the context in which fasting was revealed, but thinking about in the context of who it's speaking. It's not speaking to people who have an abundance of resources or food. They don't have, um, you know, buffets and CCs where, where this was revealed. You know, this was a very dire time. They opened their fast with a few dates. They closed their fast with a few dates. Water was not just on a faucet. You know, so you're thinking about that this is who this message is also coming to and why it makes it even more incumbent upon us to heed these words. That when Allah tells us that fasting is prescribed for you for God consciousness, that if you only knew that it would be better, use your intellect. Think about it. But then also, when you're at the end of this month, that you might be grateful. That you might have a sense of gratitude. And what I think about, in a sense, is as the verse, as the last verse caps it off, because we think about how our Ramadan sometimes go, and we see the disconnect that comes about. That Allah tells us that, uh, to the Prophet, that when my servant calls upon me, tell them I am near. You know, say it's an active conversation. Tell them I am near, and that I will respond to someone's prayer and when they call upon me, let them respond to me and believe in me. That it's a two-way affair. It's not just someone supplicating and it goes out in the middle of nowhere. No, I will respond as well. But have them call upon me too. Perhaps they might be guided to the right way. 
لعلهم يرشدوا يرشدوا that perhaps they might gain guidance thinking about what has Allah told us in the Quran about the month that we've just experienced but about the day that we've just gone through to gain a sense of God consciousness at the end of the road but to use our intellect to be a people of awareness and knowledge not just like hey I grew up fasting and so that's why I'm fasting so hey why are you fasting as a Muslim um, I heard Muslims fast in Ramadan why are you doing it uh, my parents told me uh, you know have a sense know why you are fast why are you doing it what, what and, and not just for the fast but your own aspect and faith. Otherwise, you're just kind of, we're just drifting through life. But what is the purpose of knowing it? We find to the benefits of it. We come to know the benefits of it. We come to know not just the benefits of the fasting, but of going through this month in a faithful way that we might become grateful. That we might become grateful. And what's the, uh, what's the purpose of that gratitude? What does that gratitude bring about? That you might then be uh, of those guided. That it's a sequence of steps there. And so Allah tells us, as I mentioned, in a sense that fasting is not of any material or physical benefit. It's not of any physical thing. It's, it's of a otherworldly sense. It's of a spiritual quantity. Allah doesn't say fasting is prescribed for you so that you might uh, lower your cholesterol or that you might lose your weight. You might do whatever it is, balance things out. That might be a good side effect, but that's not the purpose of fasting. That it's for a purpose that anybody can achieve. It's not just in a, in a quantifiable sense. And then we see in that sense the uh, mechanics, we see the uh, process of this is not one that is intended to bring difficulty, but one that's to bring uh, ease. And so what does this have to do with Super Mario? What does this have to do with the bigger game of life? You know, so often, as I mentioned, in this world, it's very easy for us to get caught up in one aspect or another that we're chasing money, we're chasing uh, whatever it might be, we're doing our work nine to five, we're doing it uh, overtime, whatever it might be. Um, we might be competing with other people, thinking that how other people are going through the world, we need to compare ourselves to them. Um, or we might just be living our life uh, without any kind of limits. Ramadan reminds us in a way to give us a little bit of that stop sign to give us a little bit of a sense of pause um, and intentionally inviting us to be present in the moment. Because so often, how often has it been that we'll go through the week, we'll go through our day, we'll say, where did that time go? <laughs> you know, how often do we think about this Ramadan or we sit right here at Eid? I think about it for myself that I look back and I'm just like, where did Ramadan go? You know, especially if you had spring break, it was like, where did Ramadan go? It just felt like it was on a fast track. So it invites us this month and this day in particular of Eid invites us to think about what did we just go through? Not just for ourselves, but for the wider image in a sense. That when we think about our purpose here in Ramadan, that Allah tells us that when we use our intellect, when we use our presence, when we use our awareness in a sense, we're coming to a space that we would be better suited to be grateful. Be better suited not just to be grateful, but then being better suited to be mindful of Allah. How are we going to be mindful of Allah and aware of Allah if we don't have much of that gratitude to give? It's oftentimes I work with a lot of folks that will tell us that I've gone through this month of Ramadan. I've checked off all the boxes. I did all the fasts. I not really feel spiritually connected. So, you know, the way I was doing my, maybe my prayers, the way I was experiencing stuff uh, before Ramadan, same as I was doing maybe after um, and I even went to Tarawi on the last 10 days. I, I was there for 8, 12, 20 rakats, um, and I didn't feel anything, but my feet were sore. You know? And thinking about, in a sense, when we assess our Ramadan, when we assess it at this point here, oftentimes we'll, we'll focus on that shortcoming. We'll say, this was, I, I completed this. Yeah, I did my fast, but I didn't feel really connected. How, have, how often have we assessed our Ramadan from a lens of gratitude? From a lens of gratefulness. When we think about what our tradition says about gratitude, gratitude is that which softens the heart. If we are trying to squeeze out spirituality and spiritual connection from a hardened heart, it's like me trying to get water out of a water bottle that has no water. And I'm like, no, let me, I'm going to pump as much as I can, put as much effort as I can. There might not be anything in there. But when we think about what does gratitude do for you? What does shukr do for you? Not just being like, oh, I'm thankful for this. Thanks for doing this. Well, thanks for that. Sincerely, when you think about what gratitude is, it's not just a one-time action. It's a part and parcel of how Allah expects us to be. Why? What is the, what is the benefit of gratitude? What, is, what, is, what does gratitude have to offer us in this, in this space? 
that when we think about, in, in, in essence, you know, our Prophet ﷺ had taught us that when we, when, we, when we realize that we wake up in the morning, that we may have not much, but we've got a roof over our head, we've got some food, uh, you know, our, meal, our next meal is taken care of, we have a sense of security and our health is there, that's as if you have the whole world in your hands. It's as if you've got everything right there in the palm of your hands. Three simple things. But what is that aspect of gratitude? Why, why in a sense, does it, does it cultivate this? Just thinking about, in a sense, that gratitude is not a passive thing. That when I try to practice and try to incorporate gratitude, to incorporate that sugar, you start to realize how many layers there are. You start to peel back a lot of stuff. How, how many of us have gone through this past month, the past six months, seeing what's happening across the world in Palestine and saying, I, I, I feel like my hands are tied. I can't help. I feel useless. I feel helpless. What, is this, what does that moment have to do, in a sense, what, what does it have to offer us with respect to gratitude? Gratitude's not just something in a sense of like, oh, I'm grateful I'm not over there and uh, my, my home's not getting bombed or whatnot. Gratitude in, in, in and of itself promotes a sense of deeper action. It promotes a sense of wanting to do something about it. That not just because, hey, I'm grateful for what I've got and I'm just going to sit here and be comfortable. No. Your gratitude, when it's rooted in faith, moves you to want to do something about something. You want to be a change agent. So when we think about, again, like I said, connecting the spirituality, connecting the gratitude, what do we start our prayer with? Five times a day, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. But how often do we start it? Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Just trying to get to it. But what's the purpose of us starting off saying, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen? Could have just had a real bad day. Could have just gotten laid off. We could have just had a really tough break. We could have just had a conflict with somebody. We could have had a really bad diagnosis, whatever it might have been. When we go into that prayer, we're not changing the words of it. There's a wisdom in that sense of having that gratitude. Because it's, it's, it's telling us not to spiritually bypass yourself, but it's telling you to be present in the moment. That we're grateful for every opportunity, every living moment that we have. That we think about when we say, Alhamdulillah, when we say, what, what am I grateful for? We start to think about, as you'll see in different counseling approaches and different things, people will have you keep a gratitude journal. Um, this advice is free for you. Um, just in a sense, your religion doesn't just tell you to keep a gratitude journal. It tells you to live it day in and day out. Because when I stand here right now, I'm saying, what do I have to be grateful for? And I could just, I could, I, I could pick out the things that I'm not grateful about. I could be like, man, there's not enough of these big prayer rugs here. Everybody's got to use the small prayer rugs. Um, but look at it from the other side. How many people, when we see those images, are praying in buildings where the minaret has been knocked down? How many people who are not Muslim? who are living in Muslim-majority countries, are not able to practice their faith. Because the countries that are there say, we're not allowing your religion to be professed. I think about people I know in Pakistan who are Christians. Ramadan might be a great time for us. Eid might be a great time for Muslims. What's it like for people who just had their church burned down? Thinking about what is it like to just be able to be gathered? What does that gratitude do? Because we peel back the layers. I was able to come to, to Juma, or come to Eid Salah, alhamdulillah. I might have messed up one thing. I was able to at least pray. Let me break it down. Okay, if that wasn't enough. Um, you don't know the value of something like your pinky toe until you stub it. And you think about, man, this is actually like, I don't need this. And then you hit it and you're like, oh, this, is, this really hurts. And you start to peel it back. I was on the way back from the prison a couple weeks back and I see somebody on the corner next to this Whataburger had no hands, drinking a, trying to drink some water. A homeless person on the side, no hands, just, just stumps, trying to drink. And here I am driving back, being like, man, like, you know, this, uh, this is a hot day. Just thinking about, in a sense, that when we peel back those layers, it's not to guilt trip us. It's not to make you feel down on yourself, but it's make you feel aware of, like, not only what, do I all, what all do I have, but what can I now do with this? Our gratitude in uh, our religion is an action-oriented aspect. It makes you think that what I don't have doesn't mean it needs to be the status quo. How can I make that change there? And in closing, I want to lift up a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ because as we mentioned, we will go through this society, we'll go through our work, we'll go through our, maybe even our spiritual life, and we live with a lot of maybe ifs or buts. And I went through this Ramadan and it was real good, but 
if I just did this, or but if I did that, or if this, or if that. And our Prophet Sallallahu tells us something really, really important in this sense, that strong believer is somebody, uh, is, is someone who is better and dearer to Allah than maybe a weak one, but they both are good in their matter of faith. Adhere to that which is beneficial to you. Keep asking Allah for help. Do not refrain from it. Keep engaging with Allah. And if you are afflicted, if you are tested, if you are affected with something adverse, don't say, if I had just done this or that, it would have resulted in this or that. It would have been something different. Just say instead that Allah had determined it. Allah had determined it and Allah did as Allah had willed. That qadar Allah wa ma sha afa'ala. That Allah had determined it and it so had willed. And he closes the hadith saying, the word if opens the gates of satanic thought. I'm not talking about red pitchforks and devils and whatnot. In that I talk about satanic thought. When you look at the essence of shaitan, you see disconnect from Allah. You see a lack of a connection. You see a rebellion against Allah. You see a pushback against the divine. You, know, you don't have to get into the imagery in a sense. The word if opens the doors for disconnecting yourself further from Allah. Think about the times that we have done it. If we had done that, we could have done that. If we had, how much we had maybe busied ourselves. What relationship are we building with Allah? And we think Allah might have it out for us. But instead we lean into this aspect. We lean into saying that what happened, happened. But what am I going to do about it? Our Prophet ﷺ tells us in the sense that you can keep saying if. You could say if I did this, I did this. But what are you going to do about it now? What are we going to do about this now? Our Ramadan might have been great. It might have not been great. Whatever it may have been. Our Eid is here. What are we doing going forward? It doesn't mean our prayers are gone. It doesn't mean fasting is gone. It doesn't mean any of our stuff there. It doesn't mean our family's obligations there are gone. What are we going to do going forward? We can stop making excuses because we, we, we live in a day and age where we have enough to see that we are reminded for what we've got, even if it's the littlest thing, but being able to find that, inshallah. So I want to close on, on this, that uh, it's, it's critical for us in this moment as, as uh, there's a... There's a uh, a, a TED talk by a Benedictine monk. And he lifted up that this importance that how we live gratefully, how not just being grateful, but how you live gratefully in life is you have to put some stop signs in your life. He said, how often do we go through life and we're going 100 miles an hour? But how do we go through life in a way that as if we're crossing the street, we stop, we look, and then we go. And he said, what's the benefit of having that stop? Versus me just walking into the road and saying, Allahu Allah, Allah knows what's best and something might be coming on the side. What's in it for us to have a measure of stop? To think about having these stop signs in life and for us as Muslims, if we lose sight of the fact that we've got five of these stop signs at least in life, that at least we've got one big one in Ramadan that tells us, wait, are we going to get something uh, a little bit right? We might have been living our life one way, but how are we going to do it differently now? And it does it with a particular element that is very easily lost on us in this country, especially food. It does it with a spec where it's like, I come home to a full fridge and I'm guilty of this where I'll open it. My wife can attest to this. <laughs> I look at the fridge, I'm like, there's nothing to eat. That fridge is completely empty or completely full. I look in the pantry just because there's no Doritos. I'm like, there's nothing to eat. And I shut it. Thinking about, in a sense, what does it tell us when we remove that basic aspect of physical nourishment that we, 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 we start to heighten our sense of awareness. And it gives us an insight that this isn't just a one-time, you know, as the derogatory sometimes phrase that comes of Ramadan Muslim. This is your part and parcel of who you can be and who we are. And we think about, this is just in the fasting, but between our prayers, the people who we show up to be on the prayer mat shouldn't be any different from the person that we are in and outside uh, of our lives. Here. And so as we think about, and we close with thinking of things that we are grateful for, thinking of things that we are uh, expressing our gratitude for. Again, when we sit with it just intentionally, with this Ramadan, just think to the best, whatever it might be, at least what might have been for you. Could it have been just having a chance to observe Ramadan? Could it have been just one little thing? Could it have just been the fact that you still have your eyesight? Could it just be all these different things that we want to layer in together? The thing about when Allah tells us that on this day, you're given leave, you're given celebration, you're given that permission, proclaim Allah's greatness, that you might be grateful. What is it in, what's in it for us? 
We see we can ponder on all the benefits of fasting and what the objective is to make us God conscious, but what's the benefit, what's in it for us to be grateful in the day and age that we are. So I encourage us to think about very deeply when we sit with what are we grateful for? Again, our tradition tells us that if you even just have the basic things, we come from a tradition of people who are without eyesight, calling the Adhan. We come from a tradition with people who didn't have a voice, who couldn't understand, who comes from a space, who couldn't read, couldn't write. What is the gratitude of just having an education? What's the gratitude of just having something functioning? Even if I can't see properly without my glasses, what's the gratitude of me having glasses? Little by little by little. And we think about gratitude doesn't just build for us uh, just like, oh, hey, I've got all this, because we're not just grateful for the elements. We start to become grateful and rebuilding that connection to Allah. What are, why, why am I grateful for this eyesight? Why am I grateful for this? Why am I grateful for, and you keep building it, and what's our purpose in life? Our purpose in life is to reconnect to Allah. And how can we do it until we recognize whose imprint, whose signature, whose uh, handprint is there in each of our lives? We won't know unless we sit with what we've got. Here. So in this, uh, in this moment, I want us to just think about that as we uh, go forward from this Eid, let us look upon this life every moment that we have, every moment that we live right here, right now, and going forward, that it is, as is said in the Quran, it's not purposeless, it's not aimless, that as Allah tells us in the Quran, the prayer that was lifted up, Rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batilan subhana, that you have not created all of this aimlessly. There's something there. I might not have a job right now. I might be in a difficult spot with my family. I might be in a difficult spot with my health. I might be in a very adverse situation. I might be in a tough spot with my spirituality. But you haven't created me aimlessly. You haven't created me to be here aimlessly. Build that connection with Allah. Find your purpose and see that each and every moment that you have has a chance to improve, has a chance to not just improve you, but change the world around you, inshallah. So uh, Allah cultivates uh, within us and gives us uh, as the sense of gratitude that we might cultivate our spiritual heart. Our spiritual heart being cultivated then strengthens our humanity and it then enables us for that God consciousness we wanted. We strove for in Ramadan for our fasting, but it ultimately takes us onto the right path that we seek to place. So may Allah enable us to be of a people that are those who are conscious of Allah. In each and every step of our life, may Allah enable us to be a people who not only walk in Allah's way, but do so in a way that is aware of Allah, that do so in a way that is mindful of Allah, that do so in a way that is mindful and grateful of those around them, that is mindful and grateful of the blessings that we may have, that is aware and it's not lost with, upon us that we have brothers and sisters within our faith and within other faith traditions who might be suffering to continue their faith that we have something to offer, even if it is just our supplication and our prayer. May Allah enable us to be those who alleviate oppression, those who combat oppression, those who fight injustice, and those who are the people who bring about justice uh, and the alleviation of it and not the perpetuation of it. Uh, make, may Allah make us, as Allah had intended, at the end of this Ramadan, a people of God consciousness. May Allah allow us to be a people at the least at the end of this Eid. If we don't do anything else, if we don't do anything else before we close out this Eid, we think about what we might be grateful for just once and we, ex uh, we express that to Allah. Our Prophet Ibrahim -Islam, had prayed as he and his son put up the Kaaba and raised the foundations of this blessed home and said uh, to Allah and prayed out to Allah that Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samila alim. Our Lord, accept this humble offering from us, accept this sacrifice from us. You are the all hearing, the all wise, and the all knowing. Allahumma ameen. Eid Mubarak to you all. Uh, please keep uh, everyone in this room in your prayers, the people who are organizing, the volunteers who were here last night organizing. Um, but first and foremost, again, remember that this is your journey as well. Think about what you might be grateful for. You don't have to share it with anybody else, but share it with your creator.